Hello and welcome to a, another brand new episode of Get Off My Lawn. I'm Jedi Johnson 22. That's Stick Boy 73 down there making all that racket. And Joe's Doolin is running the show, pulling the string. How's everybody doing? Doing good. Oh, holding up all right. Holding up all right. Trying to sort books and find room for books and buy more books <laughs> and there's not room for all three as well no no there's not, there's not. i think we all three had very very good mail call weeks this week we we're talking about it before yes. the show not even going to have time to cover all of it but we'll delve into it a little bit uh hopefully my throat holds up still suffering you know not over it i hope but man hopefully my throat doesn't close up again like it did last week that was embarrassing but uh, hopefully not. I got my uh, got my hot water. I got some of these things. My friend swears by them. I mean, you, you guys never taken any of these grenades? I need some. This need is some a grenades. last resort. If it starts getting too bad, my friend assures me. She says, "Take these. It'll just clear you all up." So we'll see how that goes. That that was always my job. I was the one that took the grenade in college. So. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to do it, Sticks. Somebody's got Somebody had to do it. Somebody got to roll on it. Yeah. All right, let's say hello to the chat. Uh, well, I don't know about you guys, but I am showing Tommy Longbox as yeah. taking over the number one spot this week. That bright and early at 4 p.m. Tommy. In there wow. early. Howdy, fellas. Have a good Friday evening and show. Appreciate that. Right back at you. And just to make sure he wasn't overlooked. He threw us the Shaka and the Peace sign. Nice. Just getting edged out, GT Comics. What's going on, GT? Appreciate you as always. Ed LeBeau. Going to miss another week. Sorry. Well, thank you for jo joining in for the algorithm. We are going to miss your dad jokes. Always. <laughs> and Jeffrey, hello all. Pete, keeping a good eye on us. Well, that, and, that was me. <laughs> well, that was you, okay. <laughs> Joe's keeping an eye on us. Daniel, what's going on, Friends Daniel? Hey, hey, hey. Don Dahlman. That's a new name for me. Have you guys, have you guys recognized Don? I don't want to... No. no. Uh, Hi, Don. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome. Uh, if you've been here before, sorry, uh, not ringing a bell, but I'm old and my memory mm -hmm. sucks. Is he a Golden Age Doll Man fan? Yeah, oh, when I you get old, man. you can... Uh, Mainly because of the torture backstories. But... lean on having a yeah. bad memory. <laughs> Ryan the Gray, what's up, fellows? Leftover Zaggy here with his banter and wit. D Malloy, happy Friday back at you. And Kingdom, I don't know. Kingdom's playing hooky today. He may pop in. We'll see. Pops going on, pops. And we're rounding out so far, Jeffrey Drake. Welcome, welcome. All right. Uh, yeah, this is the part where uh, Joe takes over and tells us what we're doing. Yeah, run, run, run that, run that banner there for, uh, for our start off there, and I'll get the slides up there. Oh man, you're putting way too much pressure on me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it? Are we doing the fallen ones again? Is that what we're doing? Oh no, no, the uh, the what? get off my lawn intro, the Rubik's cube. Oh, well, we haven't done that yet. It's been I know. I, I for. There we go. All righty. Get back into it. Yeah, I wasn't going to run the video yeah. bumper for Fallen Four this week since uh, so yeah, I, I kind of rebranded graphics a little because nothing's better than a drunk uh, drunk Don Draper uh, introing some books here. So with the Fallen Four, what we normally do is just kind of take a look at a few books that uh, maybe have fallen off a bit. Uh, not necessarily good books, not necessarily bad books, but books that have cooled off a little bit and uh, kind of see where they're at. Mm -hmm. First book we threw in here was the uh, War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas One. This book has a ton of first appearances in it. Um, mm -hmm. You got Luna Snow, Wave, Crescent, Io. Uh, you have the first appearance of Arrow. You have the first cameo appearance of Swordmaster, I believe, in that. Uh, yeah. In 2001, this book was peaking at like 350 bucks. I know it was 2001, but it was still holding a, a bit as maybe a $100 book or something for a while. 
nine eights are now selling around 50 bucks and one actually went as low as 30. So yeah. if you believe in these characters and uh, like first appearances, uh, you might want to, might want to throw a nine eight there. If you find a really cheap auction, I don't know. Well, Any, I anything excited, man. anything below really slab. Excited. I forgot what segment we were doing, and I'm like, "Holy shit, I have this one!" And then I realized that's bad news. I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> it's not. It's not necessarily bad news. It's it's just kind of one mm. of those weird things where it's like, ah, if, well, if you if you believe in the characters and think at some point they're they're going to use them more, or maybe bring some of them into live action or or something, yeah. yeah. And you you could yeah. sneak a thirty dollar auction out of a nine eight. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, so this spec is old. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah, very old. And by now, everyone who don't, doesn't know, but has forgotten it, you know, it's one yep. of those forgotten books. So pick it up. I mean, they're going to use these characters at some point for, for something. So. I mean, the, for, for the price of a <laughs> slab, you know, less than the price of getting a book slabbed yeah. <laughs> if you can sneak if you can sneak a nine eight I, i'm a sucker for that like i'll be looking at auctions i'm like oh 20 bucks or 25 bucks for a nine eight uh, i don't need the book i don't really want the book but uh, i'll do it anyway yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. i'm gonna spend 20 yeah. bucks on nowadays there are several variants to this con to this book as well right i mean at least yeah i believe cool. so not, yeah know. this this yeah, is the most basic yep. one that's out there but it was, uh, you know, like I said, it, there's a lot, there's a lot of first appearance. I'm, I'm a big first appearance fan. It's maybe it's the old school collector in me where first appearance really means something. Mm -hmm. But you know, nowadays, nowadays, who knows? I, I don't know what these kids are doing. <laughs> yeah. If you can't see them on the cover, it's not worth it, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, this, this, this lovely book, which was to be the next, uh, Derjevic, uh Ultimate Fallout type book. Uh, Black Panther 3, the uh, Torin Clark 1 and 25, the first appearance of Tosin. Uh, hey. This hey. this book in its peak in 2022 <laughs> was peaking between $800 and $1,400. Nine-eighths yeah. you can now get for around 230 bucks. I remember. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. this thing was... You now people were specking everything. They were specking about the movie and is that kid Tosin is, you know, it's, it was, it was a thing, but uh, I mean, it, it hasn't totally collapsed as a book. I mean, 230 bucks, still 230 bucks. Uh, for I remember this was one of the, this is one of the one times there's a, there's a few, but there's, there's only a few where FOMO did not get me and I held off on getting this one and kind of glad I did at this point. I wonder if Dom got this one. Speaking of Dom, we forgot to mention Dom and how we're going to miss him this week. Dom is at Providence, uh, Providence, Rhode Island at Rhode Island Comic Con. So next week he'll have uh, some good stuff for us, I'm sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And on, unfortunately, Bruce is, Bruce is out as well this week. Yeah. And uh, so please go sub to his Stop. channel. Kingdom so, yeah. of Nerds. Give and, us uh, a chance to, you know, don't get stuck with us right now. Give us a chance. <laughs> we'll, we'll. Get the band back together. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, this book, the dial. this book, uh, you know, I bought, I bought the non ratios just, you know, for cover price when they came out. But uh, I don't know. I, I never specced heavy in this because this book immediately out of the gate was ridiculous. And I'm like, ah, it seems a little much. I mean, even the yeah. raws were crazy. I know our, good, uh, our good friend, Steve Horn has a lot of fun with this uh, Tosin character. If you're not following <laughs> yes, Steve, he did. Uh, yes, he does. Comics. <laughs> Check him out. He started a Tosin blog Tuesdays. for Tosin Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, we know nobody cares about the MCU and MCU spec books. Uh, but we got to throw some moderns in here because if it was up to me, I'd be showing Golden Age and Silver Age hey, <laughs> for every segment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 th I threw this in there because this is a book that always pops up every now and then. It's uh, Deadpool Secret Secret Wars. The kind of first appearance of Gwenpool. She's only on the cover. She's not in the guts. Uh, nine eights are now, you know, sub $200 <clears throat> if you want to include $199.99. So this book was comfortable so over question. 200 for a while. I got a question on this one. Not really much to do with this, but it just struck me because I'm an idiot. 
the the she hulk the sensational she hulk book that came out this week the foil one that i'm sure there's a million of them out there but is it it's an homage to this right i i you know what i never i never thought about it but it very well kind of could be i mean she's laying completely flat the she hulk one but still it's close it's not it's not not an homage yeah it just yeah, thought, that, I didn't I never even put it together until you put until you showed this image. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. The water looks sharp in this. But yeah, if you, I, people there are Gwenpool collectors out there, but you know, sub 200 book, but uh, you know, at one time it was hot. Now it's not. Okay. And yeah. last on the list, Savage She-Hulk 1. Yeah, this thing was was heating up when the TV show was coming out. Uh, this was a thousand plus dollar book in early 2022. There's a million of these things Great. too. You can get a nine eight now for around three fifty. This is the first period of Sheen Hulk. So it's good news for me. This is one book that I don't necessarily collect She Hulk, but I don't not collect She Hulk either. So this is a book that's kind of on my list. And hey, if it's coming down, I might have to snag one keep an eye on it i you know i like i really love the john byrne run the sensational she hulk run and that's 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 my wheelhouse of books that i like uh, of she hulk um the slot run was okay and this run was eh, wasn't bad but uh that john byrne one is just that that's a step above in terms of uh of comic writing in general it was there's fantastic covers it was hilariously written and beautifully drawn but yeah 350 for for a 9 8 for you know i think that's more reasonable or... for this book yeah it is yeah uh, there yeah. i mean because there there oh, are yeah. there are a ton of them um mm -hmm. yeah this, but, this is uh, probably a, a market adjustment probably from the pandemic maybe yeah the, I series to the, the tv series yeah and you know how good that tv series was I, uh, yeah, we won't go into that again dom and I, <laughs> me and dom i think dom was on the same wagon i'm on we liked it i liked the the she hulk series i so. i didn't i didn't enjoy it i it, there I, was I, it was the legal thing for me i just it, it, the legal part of it bothered me because yeah, uh, i never read the comics so i didn't have that you know war going on in my head but uh yeah i liked it was cool. i didn't mind like the breaking the fourth people complained about the last episode where she broke the fourth wall and all that stuff. I thought that was fine. I, I had no problem with that. I just, I just had a problem mean, that she was for agree on something. That, that she, she was sold as some type of great lawyer, which uh, she proved not to be in every way, shape and form in that show. Right. What, what are you going to do? She's affordable. Actually, she's not even that. So, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's do some news. Uh, let me see if we still got what we got this week sticks. So on the, um, Oh my God. Back end of <laughs> Halloween being this week. Uh, I threw this in this little tidbit of news that came out today. Uh, the Winnie the Pooh bud and honey number two, uh, has unveiled its first, Close up, terrifying look at the new Winnie, look of for Winnie the Pooh for the next one, and, and definitely looks like it'd be something I'd want to catch in a dark alley. But um, I still haven't seen the first one, so I have. <laughs> and I don't. Are know you what surprised that they're coming out be... with the second one? I am. I am. It was not good. <laughs> It was not good. not good at all. I mean, it was interesting. It was kind of it's it's quirky. It's quirky. They make these movies. Way dirt cheap though so i just yeah. don't think they give a shit yeah. you know yeah. it's something that they can just sell straight to streaming and be like Pfft. little uh what's what's the uh i want to say will rogers that's not right what's the boy's name um christopher robin christopher, christopher robin robins. yeah right yeah. yeah so he does he spoiler alert if you haven't watched it, he does survive the first one so maybe he maybe we're looking at christopher robinson's uh revenge or something in this one i have no idea but yeah mm. Mm. Uh, up next, we had uh, the trailer for The Fall Guy came out, and uh, it was way too long of a trailer. <laughs> I don't know if you watched the trailer. 
I haven't. Uh, but where I have I been? Because, I didn't even know they were doing I, this. Where because I been? love the Fall Guy. Uh, I was a big, huge uh, Fall oh, Guy yeah. fan, and as long as it was, the trailer was good. But like I said, it was too long to to the point where I said it felt like I've already seen half the movie. I got to ask yeah, questions now because tough. I am yeah. totally in the dark on this one. I didn't even know they were doing this. This is a movie or a TV series. It's a movie. Movie, right? It's a movie, with, right? Uh, with Ryan Gosling and uh, yeah, who's um, playing? Who's got the Heather? Better have a good role? blonde. Um, Nicole Kidman. <sighs> no, or some Nicole. I, I don't. I don't honestly know. She's definitely oh, an Australian. <laughs> she's definitely. She's definitely an Australian. Yeah, one, some you know, some broad. Like <laughs> it's not Margot Robbie. Come on, it can't no, be. It's not Margot. It's not Margot Robbie. Right. It's not Margot Robbie. But because I tell you what, I mean, we can go down this rabbit hole another show, or hell, we'll go down it right now. I was always Team Heather Thomas versus Team Heather Locklear. I was always Team Heather Thomas. Always. I'm I'm I am with you 100 percent on that, Jedi. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that, that was an easy sell for me. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. The, the one thing that I'll tell you, Taylor. <laughs> That bikini yeah. poster, yeah. Um, it's not worth the money. Yeah, it's winter. So in the in the in the trailer, there's uh, and I, and again, I I'm almost 100 percent sure that it probably is like Nicole Kidman or maybe her, her daughter. Really blunt. They 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 poke a little fun at uh, Tom Cruise in the trailer. So be careful, Jedi, when you watch. Like blunt. Like hey, me and Tom can take a joke. Yeah, it was. It was. I gotta look up Emily Blunt. I don't even know who that is. It was a very good joke. That's uh, Uh, John Krasinski's woman. She's in. uh, She was in the Tom Cruise movie. Come on, Jedi. There's a lot of Tom Cruise movies I haven't seen yet. Yeah. (laughs) All right. right, Sorry to burst everybody's bubble. She was great. She was great in Sicario. There goes. There goes your super fan membership. She is not a wolf. They're not. Hey, I'm a founding member. You know, I'm. I'm I'm good. (laughs) All right, I need to see. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm digging this. I'm gonna need to see a bikini. I'm gonna need to see one. I haven't seen one yet. All right, moving on. So right. he's bruised and beaten in the trailer. Is it? Is is that in the trailer? He gets all banged up, or in in real life he got banged up? Yeah, there's the there's, there's definite um, uh, shots of him getting um, rolled around in a car and set on fire, and the whole the whole nine yards that you oh, get nice. for being the unknown stuntman. Perfect. So. I'm yeah. excited about that. It looks good. I'll, I'm going to go see that. Definitely uh, dragging you. my son to see this one. Definitely. This movie yeah. poster looked phenomenal, by the way. I saw a really nice poster of this that looked so this sharp. Movie, this movie uh, came around a corner and scared me because I did not know this was coming out. I and didn't I, I had heard that they were doing it, but I hadn't heard that it was finished enough where we were going to get a trailer. So, um, Kingdom of the Planet there of the is. Apes. How dare you, uh, Sticks, not know that she's not Australian? <laughs> no, I knew that she was Australian. Do your research, Sticks. God almighty. I, I'm not going to. I know I have to sit here and take this. It's a well-oiled machine here. I, I've got new news to talk about. <laughs> um, I enjoyed the trailer. Uh, I do enjoy this uh, version of Planet of the Apes. Aside from the It's 70s, good. You know, the 70s is what it is, you know. I, uh, well, the the problem with the seventies was the first movie I thought was great, but with each subsequent movie, the budget got so much worse and so much worse that Mm -hmm. by what, like battle for the planet of the apes or whatever, they were just like, you would just see extras and masks. And that was about all just running around in the background. (laughs) Yep. Yep. It was pretty bad. Um, yeah. Once they, once they didn't have, um, uh, (laughs) Mr. NRA coming back there, uh, uh, Aston, Chamberlain for the uh, Heston, not Ch- not for, for, yeah for for the second one they they uh they yeah. swapped him but, out with the uh yeah bad bad double yeah yes yes and you know it, like you said it went downhill but these movies always went uphill to me every time every I time I went to see a new one of these episodes uh it, it was better and better so yeah I expect they... this to be the same uh let's see how it goes I guess yeah, they've done they've done well with this franchise rebooting it the way they've done it. Yeah. After that, I'm interested to see where they go with this, that Burton the did. way they ended it on the last one. But let's, you know, uh, I'm assuming we're going to get a new Caesar of sorts yeah. for this next run. So let's see. Uh, let's see. This is last, right? Yep, last. Uh, so we talked about this 
a while ago, like maybe four months ago, where we had this D, big, huge, uh, all-inclusive DC comic book auction coming to Sotheby's, and it never happened. They took it off the board. It never happened. Something something went down where Sotheby's lost the the rights to do the auction. So now, come come to this month, uh, this Berkeley auction house has got the rights to do this DC. Uh, they said it's like like all silver age to bronze age DC lot, huge, and it starts on the ninth at the PBA galleries. Um, this is one of the books. Your heritage. I I don't I think heritage was taken must be taken too much off the top for him. Uh, I can't imagine. Um, but the book here, Detective Comics. Uh, here, the 1.8. That's going to be one of the books in the auction. I'll, Golden see, Age I'll peruse the auction all... just to see uh, what's going on with it and yeah, it'll be see interesting how to see they what do. It brings in old detective yeah. always brings in major major money. So that'll right. be a that'll be a big big auction. Even those purple labels and Golden Age Detective <laughs> brings in big money. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Oh, also, I guess we had some, a little bit of news. Uh, uh, Creature Commandos supposedly is getting delayed until 2025. Okay. So that, that popped out. That's the so, animated, right? Yeah, that's the animated, that's the animated one. Animated. So we'll see. We'll see how true that ends up being, but it seems mm -hmm. like the actor strike is still pushing everything back. Wah, wah, yeah. wah. So. Well, the, the writer strike didn't help it either, so. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. seems like everything is, everything is just going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So, and uh, well, that echo, that echo trailer dropped as well, which people were talking about good, bad or indifferent. I I've got very, I've heard very mixed reviews from people that have watched it. People like, ah, I'm not watching echo and other people are very excited about it. So yeah. if you haven't, if you haven't watched it, go, go watch it. Just, if for no other reason, there's a lot of kingpin in the in the trailer. So yeah, yep. you get a lot a lot of whispering D'Onofrio talking like this. You know, he he doesn't do the full Ted Hill uh, head tilt like he did in uh, Law and Order. You know, eh. He just uh, <laughs> he just uh, does it like this. Or so. in um, uh, with, uh, Men in Black, where he's the cockroach guy. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I <laughs> really like I him. loved. It. I loved it, Afrio. I'm just happy he wasn't wearing a goddamn Hawaiian shirt shirt in the uh, in the trailer. So okay, good. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll make me happy. I didn't like that. That's good enough for me. I don't know. It's, it'll. I, I, they're dropping it January 10th. I think they're dropping the whole series January 10th. A good, bad, or indifferent. I'll it's something over the holidays. I'm like, oh shit, there's something to watch. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, throwing this up here for just the name. I love this name, Weed Richards 420. <laughs> just, okay, Weed's great. He's been he's been throwing up some some oh, really? hell, hell of a oh, nice man. books up on IG. A lot of a lot of Milo Minara stuff. Man after my own heart. Oh, well, I love that name. <laughs> so, we're gonna run through some of the old comic now and later's. But before we do that, uh, anyone want to show some pickups? I, I I can uh, have a little bit of a story. Uh, good fortune for uh, for Jedi. Uh, so oh. let me give me just a second. You wanna? So it may come as a surprise to many that uh, you can uh, sometimes find me perusing the streams on whatnot, just kind of checking things out. Uh, so I was in this, uh, I went across, I went into this show. It wasn't even a comic show. It was a figures show, action figure show. So I can see stick boys ears perking up right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, it's one of those things where everything, the timing of everything was just perfect on this thing. As soon as I jumped in, they were running a giveaway. So I was like, click, I jumped in this giveaway real quick. Five seconds later, the wheel is spinning and I win this. Oh, nice. Oh. Fit or not. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, okay, this is cool. It's cool. I'll stick around. If if I win a give it, if I they call them gibbies on on, on whatnot, in case you know you're not one of us, they call them gibbies. Uh, I'm not in the if club. I win a, 
if I win a Gibby, I'll, I'll usually check out the buy it now and see, you know, see what they got. Which I mean, you know, check absolutely. Things out. Uh, so while I'm checking things out, this other guy wins this. He paid too much, but that's okay. This other guy wins this other auction, and I guess he has a lot of money or whatever. And he's like, "Hey, uh, throw this up as another Gibby." And I was like, okay, this is so I entered that giveaway, right? I mean, we're talking like not like within 15 minutes of me just winning one, right? So I entered that giveaway and the guy paid, I want to say he paid like $200 for this thing, uh, which is about a hundred dollars wow. too much really. But anyway, and lo and behold, I win that one too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's, and it's oh, nice. this one oh, and it's right. unpunched. It's an unpunched card. I think that's why it was going. He 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 paid so much for it. I looked I these up. These normally go for like eighty or ninety or something on uh, on the bay. Uh, so yeah, he, he kind of overpaid for it, but that's okay. I appreciate. It. So yeah, he threw this up, and I won it. I was like, holy shit, dude! Uh, unfortunately, they don't sell lottery tickets here in Hawaii, so I was shit out of luck there. <laughs> so they, you know, I'm keep, I'm watching the show. I'm watching, And so he has this, the guy, the seller has this thing where when you buy something in the figure, there's a sticker on the back and you can either win like a free plastic case. Um, uh, uh, those, I didn't win any, those were my plastic cases that I put on these earlier. Uh, or you can win, um, there was something else you could win or you could win this. He would spin the wheel, right? He had this wheel you could spin. Uh, so I'm sitting there watching this wheel spin until there's only one prize left on the on the wheel so whoever gets the next wheel spin sticky on the back of their thing they buy is going to win whatever this is so i'm just biding my time playing the odds i'm waiting i'm waiting i'm like okay sooner or later this other i know how many auctions are left sooner or later this this other sticky is going to come up and i bid on it and i won now the figure is not that exciting the figure <laughs> I, I bid on and won is not that exciting it's a wig way Oh, we could. Oh, yeah. the most attractive yeah. of all Jedi characters. Yeah. But <laughs> on the back, the sticker said, spin the wheel. And I'm like, holy shit. Because I already know what the uh, what the prize is. is You've got a horseshoe up your ass, Jedi. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, this, is, this is, it didn't come in, <laughs> it did not, uh, oops, where's it at? It did not come in this case. This I put it in the case. Uh, but this is what I won, a six inch. Oh, how nice. Can never go wrong with Star Trooper. Trooper. Yeah. yeah, so I put it in the, the case. But... Huh? Is that the one is with that... the dented helmet from the door hitting him? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, no, it's not. This is the, yeah, the Return yeah. of the Jedi. So anyway, I was feeling pretty good. And that's where my, you know, the show ended after that, shortly after that. But man, I was on a roll. I was billing it. And uh, I will be right. checking that guy's uh, sales out in the future because he may be my lucky star. I don't know. Well, with that kind of luck, yeah. I'm surprised your brother's not grabbing you to go to the casino. Man, I, yeah. <laughs> What's going on, man? 2023 is uh... coming to an end and it's just getting good for me. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You got anything, Sticks? Want show? Um, I'll show a couple things. So on one of those web-based... Uh... Oops. Auction there houses there, uh, high bid. I don't know if you've ever been on high bid. Uh, they had put uh, one of the sellers had put up some action figures, and they had some. They had this uh, mummy figure that I that I get at the Doctor Who uh, mummy. You love your Who from from Pyramids of Mars, and it came with a not the correct uh, canopic jar, but a canopic jar. That's where the organs go. Yep. So I picked that up for like ten bucks. Usually they're about fifteen bucks. I was alright with that. It came I, from Canada, so I really I, only paid six. I kn I knew my degree in anthropology would pay off at some point. <laughs> there you go. Um, then uh, on Macari, uh, they had a deal going. If you if you if you listed thirty or more items, they give you a coupon for twenty bucks off. And I've been eyeing this for a while on there. Um, which is surprise, surprise, it's the same thing, but in the package. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, so, cool. With the correct the one, uh... Yeah, this, the only thing is that, that he did open it at one point, so it does have a uh... cut all around the around it, but that's fine. I'll 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 uh I'll fix them on the inside so like it'll they'll stay in. 
Still looks sharp. And then uh, I, too, was perusing uh, whatnot and uh, going through their sales. And Greg Horn was on. Oh, well, I love Greg Horn. He's a funny dude. I had, I had been on his website maybe a day or so before, and I had seen something on his website that I liked. And uh, so I went on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let like, me guess. You didn't buy one of his painted rocks, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not buy one of his paint. Uh, those are cool, though. Those are cool. I like painted rocks. Buy one. But, you know, uh, so I went in. I I won. Uh, he had just started it up, so I had won uh, his giveaway, the opening giveaway, and I got a I got a Ghost Rider wow. poster. Oh, nice! One of those ones that the you get at the store. Well, they, you know they display at the store. So I'm like, I got free shipping. I'm buying what I want. <laughs> So they had, and I had to ask for it because he didn't have it on whatnot. I said, do you have this that you can put on whatnot for me? And he's like, yeah, I, I got it for it. Well, first That's he put nice. one up that he had a remark on, or he, he would do a remark for it, and that went for like 70 bucks. So I'm like, "That's not in my price range. So I just bought the print. The print was 15 bucks. So they had a Doctor Who uh, mummy. Oh, I've seen that one. Oh, nice. Oh, it's got that figure on it, too. That's the same figure, right? The one you bought? It's it's so this one's it's a little different, but it is it's, it's oh. definitely a mummy with the uh, oh, okay. rose yeah. here, and then you got the um here. I I liked it, so this will get um framed and put up here in the yeah that's a, collection that's room. Sweet. I like nice. that. I like that a lot. And, and he, and he, he, gives a, <laughs> he gives a free signature on it, so yep, yep, that's nice. Yo, yeah, yep. He's uh, Joe's <sighs> Joe's cool. I like Joe. I got Greg, so many. Sorry, Greg. I, I like Joe I got, too. I'm I'm cool too. I got Joe so many cool. prints now, and I, I don't know what to do with them. I it's like I I don't have enough room to keep framing them all and putting them up. <laughs> yeah, but I got so many. I prints. have boxes and boxes of posters that are still in the, you know, the wrap or either from I'm Disney sure where I got the, um, Star Wars posters from when the movies were coming out, and you, if you had points, you can get them for free. You know, so I have a lot of those type of posters, but I don't really display them as much as i would like i don't have the wall space yeah i got i got i got my gauntlet poster that that was that was my big purchase the frazetta gauntlet poster mm -hmm. that that one i was like that one's that one is going in a frame because it's it's not a reproduction yeah, yeah and it's a frazetta so i was like oh that's that's definitely going up and eastwood it it hit me so many different ways <laughs> right but uh yeah let me uh pop up i got a got a few a few things uh i have nothing from whatnot uh this week <laughs> no, uh, we don't want to no i do have something from heritage oh, uh, oh well talk man Hawk four man that's your first four? satana yep okay yeah it's a six oh i i've been wanting this book for quite a while so i decided mm -hmm. to pull the trigger sure. and i got a nice uh jeffrey drake in the chat, I believe today sent me this beautiful uh, Sumerian Frost Giant's Daughter. It's the uh, exclusive one with a nice spot gold on it. Yeah, nice. It's uh, I say I don't care what you say about Momoko. She does have some nice covers. Okay, so it's, it's now, I, you know I wanted to say that that looks like Momoko, but I it is. I suck at I suck at identif identifying yeah. artists sometimes. Yeah. So is that right? It is. But it thank you very much, Jeffrey. I am I am a sucker for. <laughs> All things Conan. So, uh, you know, <laughs> those those were my big ones. And then I got uh, oh, I got oh, got yeah. a mail call today. Mm. So that was uh, that was fun. This mail call is mostly bombshell books. Okay, I'm 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 run filling with bombshells, and also I'm run filling with. Fairest, Ollie Hughes covers. Uh, this this book had such great Hughes covers. Sure I, don't, I don't understand why they're so cheap, but all these books I got kind of at or right around cover price or below. So there's just a lot of, lot of a lot of good stuff there. A nice stack of that, and then. Uh, Let's see what other fun. Oh, I got a bunch of bunch of Batgirl books. I was in a I was in a run filler kind of kind of mood. 
So okay. I was, uh, there's the Babs and Babs Tar stuff. There was some Middleton early on, but I, I like the Babs Tar covers. So nice. Uh, I was like, hey, you know, I I like I like buying books cheap and building things yeah. out. So that was my stack today. I got another stack coming next week. I got a a bunch of frizzing stuff coming. So. Ooh, I got some prison stuff to show too. Yeah, I I found some some fun, uh, some old older, <clears throat> not as well known prison stuff coming next week. So I'm I'm pre pretty excited about that. Nice. Yeah, so that's what we got Good there. Let, let me pop this bad boy back up here. Boop. And let's do our little comic now and later here. So again, three books out now, three that will be out soon. Uh, nothing more than just stuff I like. Uh, stuff that's out this week that I thought was kind of interesting. I like the It's Jeff, the Jeff verse. The irregular It's Jeff book when three prints, that still kind of sell. You know, they're, they're not big money books. But this uh, Zulu uh, variant that was out this week, you know, this this book had, I think, three different covers. So I don't know how heavily ordered this was, but all the Zulu covers with those trick-or-treat covers that she did for DC were big hits. So I don't know if people seem to really uh, take to her art and she starts doing a lot more things in this style and, and putting stuff out like this. It's not a bad book to have. And people, people love Jeff. Uh, then there was uh, Blood Commandment 1. There was just a, a Last of Us homage cover in there. This book had a Lost Boys homage cover as well. So I thought maybe people would gravitate to the Lost Boys one since it's around Halloween and kind of sleep a little on the Last of Us one. None of these books are selling for above cover. So they're sure they're still sitting around at your LCS and very pick up a so was the lost boys one also designed to look like a blu-ray like this one i mean it's definitely no no the, the lost boys one just looked like a movie poster type yeah type deal. the movie poster the red and white and then i i always love my my gun honey heat seeker this is just the a cover but it is just a very pretty cover uh sometimes with heat seeker you don't have to go find exclusives and ratios and all that shit it's you can just find the A cover, and it's it's quite worthwhile. I like all this, all these hard case crime books. They're they're fun to read, as well as having some some pretty sharp covers as well. Cool. And in the future, uh, I I like this Lobos Power Girl one uncovered. Uh, the FOC is uh, January seventh. Uh, I should say 2024 there, but uh, my years are messed up. But uh, it's it's a it's a pretty sharp Lobos cover. I, I know he's getting a lot of work now. I don't know by this time whether people are going to be getting tired. I don't know how people go with the arcs of these. It's just <laughs> like it a portal? term. I <laughs> I'm sure I it, God knows it probably it probably is a version a version that will be foil. I'm tired of foil. I like spot foil. I like We're spot foil. foil. Spot foil looks good. When they do spot foil and uh, it looks good. When they do full foil hey, covers, you're lucky Bruce is not here. He would. Hey, he'll he'll yell at me in the chat. I'm sure if he's in there still. Uh, but um, but yeah, I don't know. You know the way these artists go. It, you know everyone was loving, loving, loving Art Germ, and then people were kind of like, eh, it kind of fell off a little bit um, as they start to do more and more covers. But I like Lobos' stuff. Um, I like Power Girl, so it's a winner for me. I, lo I love the Nightwing 110. Uh, it's just the A cover, but I like meme covers uh, and meme homages. I just now get it. I just now getting the, the fun. Okay, it is funny. So I thought that was hilarious just for a fun little yeah, A cover. Funny. That would be fun. Um, and this uh, ASM 40, the uh, the uh, Jiang Li exclusive. There's two versions of this. There's one where she's kind of wearing a little, little half top type deal as well where she's showing a little more skin, uh, but they're both kind of the old roller skate uh, homages there. I know. So is, is this going to check the box for the, we, we know there's bubble gum 
collectors out there. I, I guarantee you there's roller skate collectors out there. I, there should be. That box, right? I, there should there, be. There should be. I, I have Ghost Roller on the cover of one of our, our bumpers tonight. There, there was actually a Ghost Roller at one point. So, uh, <laughs> a, uh, a Spirit of Vengeance uh, that wore roller skates and uh, Daisy Dukes. You lost a friend, you. You lost Hot. a friend. Hot. <laughs> I, 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 I foil. I just don't, I don't dig it. I like spot foil. I, I, I'm okay with spot foil. I, like I lived, foil. I lived through those days of foil and lenticular and die cuts and all <laughs> that. I'm like, don't we have enough covers now? Do Isn't we, that we... what the nostalgia of collecting is all about, Joe, is reliving those days? <laughs> That's what we're yeah, doing. Uh, it, reliving those days. You and, want to and relive I, the good things, though. You want to I, the good I, and things. it's okay to relive it. Like when it's like, hey, this is coming out of the blue and here's a spot foil, or this is coming out of the blue and it's a foil. That's fun. But when it's like, this week, here's your seven foil covers, <laughs> it gets a little But the foils back while. then would flake off, right? I'm, I know in sports cards, the foils back in sports cards, they would flake off. Or comic books, were they the same? I, d- I didn't have any <laughs> issues. No. I didn't have any issues with the flaking. I, the no, ones I now thought. that I, I don't know that. I don't know the the DCs. I I like the I like the unfoiled ones, and I like the DC books. I like the art on the DC books. I just think, I just think that. What about metals? What about metals, Joe? Metals are nuts. I have, yeah. like I said, I have a few I, Archie metal ones, and Jesus, they're so sharp. I like, I go in, I go in my yeah. my box, you and I'm going through, loader, and I'm like, ah, oh, damn! Now I got to wipe blood out of my my short box. It's a uh, it's a pain in the ass. So Joe and I off camera in the chat, we we were talking about metals one time. I do not have a metal uh, in my collection. Just a word, just as a teaser, that's going to change in the near future. Oh my! Oh my! Got to have at least one. I did. I did actually. That reminds me. I did get a new one. I don't know if I shut it off because I think I might have put it away. It is. It is a metal. Speaking of metal. Let me just pop this by up here real fast. Oh, no. (laughs) Betty Black Cat. Yeah. I I couldn't pass that Mm -hmm. up. Ah, uh, this Nuno Peretta pop mm-hmm. uh, Archie homages the pop art ones. I seem to buy them every time they come up, and they seem to now be coming up like every other week. So I have a problem, and uh, I need help because because <laughs> I'm starting to get a lot of them. I don't get the medals in all of them. They, I mean, they are pretty reasonable nonetheless. I think the medals they only do fifty of them, and the uh, the regular ones they do two fifty. Oh so. yeah, they break them down though because you got the APs and the PH. I've done my, I've done a little research. <laughs> <laughs> they really, uh, yeah, they, they like break them down. There's like limited. Pro- oh, that's crazy. They're, the metals are nuts. Yeah, it's it's like I said, it's it's weird to put them in the box. I I worry sometimes having them in there, pushing against other stuff because they're sharp. Those corners are sh- those corners are sharp. And all, yeah, you, all you need to put them in a top loader, but then it won't fit in your box. But yeah, and I and I hate great. top loaders. I despise top loaders. I just they never yeah, seem to fit loaders. in well. I love top loaders. I hate I've been, them. I'll, I've been, I'll send you some if you want some. I got stuff. I'm struggling. I want all I can get. I love putting I've, shit in top loaders. I've been struggling with uh, redoing my Amazing Spider-Man collection by putting them in top loaders. Do I want it to, or do I not want to spend the money to put them all into top loaders? Maybe just my silver age ones, I guess. But uh, I, I, I don't know if I'll I do mean, the whole to me piece wrong. Nothing is better than mylar, and yeah, and getting those those same backing boards to go with the mylar, the nice thick backing boards. That yeah. makes the sharpest looking book around. There's something when you see yeah. a book that's in mylar, <laughs> you're like, oh, that book costs money. But you could put the mylar in the top loaders. So you have you, you can, have the best of both worlds there. Yeah, I don't know. I, the, my, thing, my my advice to anybody would like for sticks. I mean, it, to me, it depends on how for one how clumsy you are, and two how much you're going to handle these things. That's Obviously, true. the more you're going to handle them, I think the, the more protection yeah. you want on them. But oh, Jesus Christ, I got I got stacks of top loaders just laying around. I'll everywhere. send you my address. I'll <laughs> send you my address. 
I had I had them everywhere because I was doing the same thing. I was like, I need to protect these books. I'm getting top loaders, and then I just got this mad. This is right around the corner, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Shove them all yeah. in the priority mailbox and send them out to you. Uh, yeah, I may have to get this Spider Man because that's just kind of a. I mean, I don't not that I collect roller skates, but I gotta admit it's yeah. it's. It's drawing my eyes to it. The, the other the one screen. is, like I said, a little more risque. It shows a little more skin up top. But I don't know. I thought this one was kind of cool. It looked pretty sharp. Yeah. But, the, the, the ASM exclusives, I don't get unless, I, unless they've been out for a while and I can get them for a good price. Yeah. Like, um, I, 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 like too, I, they put out too many. They put out too many black cat. Oh, yeah. Variant exclusives. You'll get Mary Jane, one. Black Hat. Yeah, you, yeah, you like get all, all these that, that don't have anything to do with the book, and then nothing against. Yeah, the but uh, it. just, sexy sales, you know. man, sexy sales. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I really wait. like that Nightwing. The more I look at it, the more I think I'm gonna have to get that one. That's that a very funny clever. cover. That's, that's I, I like it. Clever, funny, funny. Yeah. And Nightwing's a pretty good read anyway, so that's that's always fun. But uh, but yeah, I I saw that. And I was like, oh, that's fun. That's. Uh, that's what I want more of in comics. I don't need yeah. I don't need everything to be foils and ratios. Just give me some fun A covers that I could look at and go, oh, I could buy that. I could pre-order that and get that cheap and, and be happy. So that's what we got on the list this week. Oh, <clears throat> so our artist spotlight this week is Mike Plube, the master born in 1940. That brought us so many fantastic, fun horror books. So I'm going to probably my favorite comic cover ever, which we'll get to. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to go through a handful of his covers and show a handful of his work. And then Styx is going to do just a, a little market report on a few of his books as well. So you can kind of see where some I, of them I, are priced at. I picked some oddball ones that you're not going to have on this list, I'm sure. So. I like I, I, think I have one, I think I have one of the oddballs on there one one of the curveballs but say so. yeah but yeah so uh, <clears throat> you know he how he really kind of made his nut with these werewolf by night and ghost rider covers especially the Marvel spotlight stuff the earlier Marvel spotlight stuff so his werewolf by night is is by far one of my favorite werewolf by nights. It's got all the God fantastic early covers there. So many of these are for the years. These books were treated like absolute and utter shit. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. over the past maybe two or three years, people have started to have more of an appreciation for them. Um, you know, Ghost Rider was always a big spotlight. Five was always big. You know, right. people would always dig that out and maybe some of the other spotlights with, with Ghost Rider, you know, six through 11 or whatever. Yeah, you always saw these in the cheap bin. But yeah, the Werewolf by Nights especially, it's like nobody gave a shit and they treated them like garbage, which is why it's hard to get a lot of these in really high grade because they really are beat to hell, but they have such great they art. They between in the dollar box. Yeah, pretty much. Between Plug and Wolfman, uh, the art on this stuff is is just fantastic. If you're a you know a monster fan and horror fan, uh, these are some these are some fantastic covers. And then you get into the the Ghost Riders with their early Marvel spotlights. You know, got your first Ghost Rider there. Number five. That's my favorite. That's probably my favorite cover ever. I mean, it, it's closely it closely resembles Ghost Rider one, but this is this is my favorite. And I love all these, uh, everything for everything from the trade dress to the art. Uh, I love five, five, six, seven. I loved how they, you know, they, they kind of put the title down there at the bottom. It's just, they're sharp. It's sharp layout. They're well-designed books and they're, uh, they're very nice on the eyes. He also did a bunch of the, uh, the monster Frankenstein books as well. So if you are a monster fan, uh, you can mm -hmm. definitely hit up a bunch of that. I have most of them. It seems like he knows what colors are going to attract. I mean, you're just going to, his, his color selections just, they pop off the page the way he, yeah. it's just very but, dynamic and just like grabs you the way these, these his covers do. He, 
he was perfect for this time too because this, this time and that art style and everything it just it just hit <clears throat> you know he had a few of those marvel premieres as well out there with dr strange you know some fun you know crypt of shadows vault of evil kind of the random Mar marvel horror books that were out there as well mm -hmm. he did a nice run of man thing so there's some great man thing covers out there god knows if marvel will ever bring him back it was great to see him in the werewolf by night special last year <clears throat> how old is he he's in his it's like in his 80s or am i Luke was, he was born in 40 so he, he's in his early he's 80s. 80 something yeah yeah, yeah his, his man thing covers are fantastic sure yep yeah he is uh bad as ad this was a later series that he did these are gorgeous covers um i wow i i would like to pick these up and find these at some point i'm sure like everything nowadays you could find these cheap somewhere but they are beautiful covers and we'll find out the price of i believe one of these a little bit later as well so you'll know <laughs> if you're looking for them uh about how much they run but they are they are gorgeous covers and that's the plugart I uh hey anybody have any any plug they would like to show before well, I we get into the marker? I don't I should I, I thought I had more, but this is the only one Here, me, that I yeah, have. Let me, let me I had a spotlight five. I won't go into that horror story again. Probably the biggest mistake I've made since getting back into collecting was right. uh, I had a spotlight five. It was a CBCS 94, but it was altered, and I let somebody who I thought, you know, somebody that had been in the hobby longer than me that I, I kind of, at the time, at least respected their opinion, told me that uh, um, altered or stuff was pretty much garbage and I should get rid of it. And I did. I sold it and I regret it. I made money off of it. I mean, I'm not going to say I got, I, I lost money. I made, I probably made about $400, but nowhere near what, what it would be valued. Be now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, it's always the ones that get away that that, yeah. that haunt us. Um, yeah, I, 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 so I always equate uh, I equate my collecting to like finding a new job. Don't don't sell off something until you have something new. Don't like don't get a new job until you have a new job. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't quit, do you? Yeah. So. Yeah. Anymore, if I if I pause and think about it, and I'm like, do I really want to get rid of this? I won't get rid of it. Because I've done that with too many things in the past. I mean, I mean, people always upgrade their books to a different grade. I mean, that's fine, you know. Yeah. But wait to sell the one you got. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't get I it, myself then you still already sold it off, and it goes up. Like Jedi, you're out of a. Out all of right, a... sticks. Damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rub it in. Rub it in. <laughs> Rub it in. Rub it in. All right, let's, uh, let's get into my uh, oddball market report. So I picked a few books of his. Um, some some are modern that he had done. Uh, and by the way, he is eighty three currently. Uh, this this uh, yep. as this calendar year rolls on. Uh, but this is Call the Destroyer number eleven from nineteen seventy three. There's a couple uh, nice called kind of a kind of a Conan ripoff. Yeah. Right. Basically. Can we say? Yeah, I think we could say. Yeah, uh, this is a great cover. I like this one. This is one yeah. of his. This is one of his first call call books. Um, good number on the census. Forty eight graded on the census. Uh, eight nine eight, eleven nine sixes, and thirteen nine fours with a five zero as the lowest. Uh, two signature in a nine six and one in a nine zero. That's nice. Um, as far as sales on this book, ungraded goes. For about four, four bucks. Um, sometimes you can find them in a lot, a little cheaper. Uh, and as you can see, there's obviously. there's some Mark Jeweler variants out there. And there's that one Mark Jeweler uh, that was an eleven and twelve in that lot that sold for twenty two fifty. So about eleven bucks for a Mark Jewelers. Um, that's a pretty fair run. Uh, eight O loan eight O sold in twenty two four fifty, and this year a nine eight sold for 139 so very reasonable if you're looking yeah. for a call 
if you don't like Conan, yeah. but like Conan-esque things. Right. So then when we move into Conan, he did uh, a good run on the Savage Sword of Conan here. And I picked yes. out this one with this great Snake Beast. Uh, Savage Sword great. of Conan number 34 from October of 1978. Of course, the Savage Sword of Conan is a magazine size uh book those, those covers are fantastic on savage sword these, of these these painted covers whether it's plug or whoever always look really good yeah I um do. i wish i liked conan enough to say i want to buy the whole run but I, I i have a couple that i've bought over the years that just covers that i i really liked um just to have in the collection my problem is when i look at magazines i I always gravitate toward creepy, creepy or eerie yep. instead instead of instead of Savage Sword when yeah. I'm looking at some of the yeah. some of the cool covers that are out there. Uh, this has twelve uh, books on the graded census: five nine eights, six nine sixes, and alone nine four. Uh, there was only one sale that was this year. It was ungraded at eight bucks. Wow. So uh, an affordable book. Um, yeah. You know. A lot of if you have the space for magazines, I, I would, I wouldn't, I would tell you to pick up at least one. Uh, yeah, I, so. I, I have a slabbed magazine, which uh, again, oh, really? I am very happy that I have a slabbed magazine because it was, again, it was, it was something that I really, I really wanted because it, Marvin, but oh, okay. my God, it's such a huge fat thing and it's like it's it's yeah. too tall to put on a bookshelf i don't have a box that fits it and i'm just like oh, i don't even know what to do with this now <laughs> right it comes a pain yeah. i can't imagine collecting slabbed magazines in any way and rough. having a whole i couldn't yeah the comics are heavy enough i'm having that big plastic yeah yeah so yeah so yeah, up next amazing. i picked this one uh, i'm a huge innovation fan i love the books of innovation, the publisher, and I had to throw this one in because I didn't know it was him. Uh, Maze Agency Annual Number One. This is definitely uh, an oddball. If you're Hughes, Hughes putting, didn't Hughes do a lot of early of the Maze Agency covers too? I believe he did a couple others. Yeah, this was one of the. This was, was his first one that he did, and then. Um, I think he did one. There was another publisher after Innovation that took on Maze Agency. He did a couple for it too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love Innovation stuff. Granted, I, again, books that were beat to living hell. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, really, really beat the hell. <laughs> I buy, I buy, I buy them by the lot, you know, usually, and then I'll Fish get some that good. are like they're like ripped and torn and you know and there'll be a book that i wanted like i really could use that one but it's all ripped and torn. And, but then there's some of the come back that are like like near me in the same lot you know so yeah someone was taking care of it and then not taking care of it so um only two grades on the census a nine eight and a nine six but uh no uh no sales on this book wow um the two people who slab that wanted it so they were big fans of either Plug or Maze Agency. Right. Uh, so here's that uh, Abadazad, uh, number one. This is the second print from Cross Gen, uh, 2004. This is a sharp. I, I really did. That like, whole series like said, is pretty. That whole series is, I'd never seen it before, and I'm probably going to pick up some of them. because they, yeah. they were really nice covers. Yeah, yeah, they were. Uh, this one has 10 graded on the census, two nine nines. Four nine eights and two signature nine sixes. Uh, no sales on that one either, but oh, two nine nines. That, that, that's what I'm going to start keeping an eye out for, because uh, that whole series. I just I, I want to pick up all four of them because they're pretty. Yeah. Mm. And the my final one, <clears throat> not necessarily a Mike Plug cover, but they use this uh, interior art. Uh, Werewolf by Night number one from 2020, the hidden gem variant. Um, from Werewolf by Night number 13, this interior uh, uh, portion they use for the, for the cover of this. 
where Mike Blue did the pencils and Frank Sharmani did the inks for. Um, this has got a good grading. Uh, this has got a healthy one. Wow. 107 uh, graded. Uh, 8998s, a uh, one signature, uh, 1496s, and a 9490, and an 8.5 as the lowest. Um, that's ungraded. That, 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 that is, that is a modern, that is a modern census if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, sales, uh, ungraded, the uh, one recently sold, uh, for 130 bucks uh back in what was that uh june uh and another one sold for 95 and one sold for 50 this year uh an ao sale um one just this month uh for 399 dollars just shy of 400 uh a 400 sale earlier in the year and one for 450 uh even earlier in the year here at uh in april so it keeping about a 350 to 400 base price for that and an ao and the nine eights uh someone someone's getting good deals here on these nine eights because i don't know why the eight o's are going for more than the nine eights but a nine eight is weird nowadays <laughs> nine eights of this sold uh just last month uh two hundred dollars for a nine eight for a one in one hundred hidden gem I, I i can't see how you would by the 80 and not the 98 but yeah. uh 229 in august uh so i mean this it, that, that's a boggle of the mind right there for yeah instance. i it's, so. it's the ebay is a weird place nowadays you see some weird stuff happen some interesting auctions out there that are kind of yeah. crazy thank you very much for the market report sticks it's always it's always good to see what some of those books are selling for when we're looking at pretty covers and you know it's not stuff that's on people's necessarily on their hot list but yeah. Ghost Rider radar, is, uh, for that matter yeah yeah uh, but uh, you know i if you look the books that have been hot most recently have been books that involve ghost rider wolverine he's mm -hmm. you know still holds in there so people will go back to that stuff over and over again so good stuff good okay. stuff well, Jedi, my man, it's your time to shine, sir. All right. Well, it's been a few weeks. I may be a little rusty, but uh, hopefully my throat doesn't close up on me. So uh, here we go. For this week, comic review. Oops, let me get on the right. Uh, we're going to hit a little rewind. And we're actually going to review one of the books that uh, we just talked about because it kind of fell in line with the... Uh, with uh, one of with our artist spotlight this week we are going to review marvel spotlight number five we thought that would be fun uh, probably everybody knows the uh the story of uh you know at least in a roundabout way the story of the origin of ghost rider but we're actually going to walk run walk through it at least maybe run through it uh, a lot, so a lot of people spotlight have never opened the pages five. of it <laughs> i don't blame them i mean if you got one <laughs> I'm yeah. not opening the pages either. You know, hopefully, maybe if you read it online, or if you're like me, I, I might have to dig it out. But they have the fundamentals, like the Ghost Rider fundamentals and collection and things like that. You can buy for pretty cheap uh, to read through it. Uh, and uh, a lot of the, some of the language in it is kind of funny because it's kind of got that old language, like "Hey" or "Dame," calling women "Dame." All this <laughs> weird stuff. So they're kind of fun to fun to read in a way. But uh, so yeah, as you can see, uh, obviously, cover artist Mark. I'm sorry. Uh, Mike Plug. Uh, all right, so we're gonna start off with the the Ghost Rider. He's just riding down the street. He's already obviously uh, the Ghost Rider, but he kind of at the beginning, you know, of the series. Obviously, he doesn't really want to be the Ghost Rider. He just kind of got uh, tricked into it. We'll see how that goes later. But <clears throat> but uh, so he's riding down the street in the rain, and uh, he's just cruising by these guys that are like robbing this place. He don't really give a shit. He's just riding by, <clears throat> but they make the mistake of thinking, hey, some guy just drove by. He might be able to uh, identify us. We need to go catch him. All right, that was a mistake. So they get in their car. They start chasing him, and uh, they, they, they finally 
kind of corner that you know they they're chasing him in the car it's raining blah 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 uh they i guess i think they corner him they stop they get out of the car ghost rider kind of turns around and is like hey do you know who i am i am a servant of satan you know and just gives them the the, the you know let them know who he is and uh so they're like holy shit he's, he's catching our crotch on fire uh this is not going to be a good night for us <laughs> No, so, uh, then he like does a wheelie and like jumps over him and like room just takes off room and uh so then as the sun starts to rise he starts transforming back into um you know himself i forgot <laughs> i didn't write myself Jack. any uh any cheat notes um johnny blaze. blaze johnny blaze thank you jesus johnny blaze uh and he's kind of sitting there with a hangover you know thinking back uh so now we get a little bit of a flashback uh to johnny's dad barton who dies during a during a stunt while they're in the uh this uh traveling uh crash simpson stunt show but uh crash and his family they take him in because he doesn't have anybody else they take him in and kind of adopt him if you will and johnny continues to train as a stunt rider uh, obviously, uh, Crash uh, and his wife, they have a daughter named Roxanne. And so Johnny is practicing. His, his motorcycle gets out of control. There's a stunt gone wrong. And Crash's wife and Johnny's, you know, mom figure uh, dies. But before her death, she makes Johnny promise not to ever ride in one of Crash's shows. It uh, doesn't really tell us, I don't remember reading how, why she felt that way, but maybe she had just seen too many deaths, uh, and that, you know, with, with his father and whatnot and didn't want him to do it. So Johnny continues to practice being a stunt rider and he tinkers and he does odd jobs around the, around the, uh, the show and stuff and kind of kindles a romantic relationship with the hot Roxanne. Uh, so that's not weird. But uh, yeah, kind of the stepbrother. <laughs> Never mind. Won't go into uh, Dom's porn history, but uh, <laughs> kind of just kind of gets this relationship going. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> Picking on Dom, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he kind of gets a relation, relationship with uh, with Roxanne, and uh, so meanwhile the show continues. But he doesn't do any stunts in the show. He just kind of you know a mechanic, whatever, help around, trains. So. Hey, they get their big break and Crash's show gets called up to perform at Madison Square Garden in New York. But this is where things take a turn and Crash lets everybody know that he's sick and he only has like a month to live. <laughs> so they kind of want, you know, the family, Crash and Roxanne are like, hey, Johnny, you know, this is a big deal. You need to like do this for us this is our big opportunity but johnny's like no i, I promised you know, mom or you know i wouldn't do it so then roxanne calls him a coward like ooh, all right chicken cost like calling him a chicken and stuff but so but he's like no i'm not going to do it so then he's like so upset that and this is the part i remember reading this i remember the first time i read this this is the part i thought was kind of funny apparently johnny has knowledge of satanic rituals somehow <laughs> and he like knows hey, how to conjure up you know, spells. Sometimes Satan's your homeboy. Yeah, somehow he just he's, he, he's bored and just did a lot of reading. I guess I don't know. He's got a library so, uh, card. He knows how to read. <laughs> so Johnny makes a deal with the devil, with Satan himself, uh, that he the the deal was that he would become the his his servant of whatever, and if he would spare Crash uh, from his deadly disease. So the devil's like, cool, bet, we're on. Uh, you're now my, my servant of destruction, etc. So meanwhile, at the, uh, at the show at Madison Square Garden, uh, Crash is like, okay, I'm, I know I'm sick, but hell, this is our big shot. Johnny's too big of a puss. He's not going to do it. I'm going to get on this motorcycle, and I'm going to do this justifying leap over these cars and whatnot. So he does it, and his, even though his daughter, I guess, is trying to stop him, but he does it, and it does not end well. Shit goes sideways, and he crashes, and here comes Johnny, uh, you know, to try and help him, but it's too late. Crash dies. Uh, Roxanne is upset. Her, obviously, obviously, her mother and father are now dead. 
Johnny strolls very sadly back into Madison Square Garden where he decides, fuck it, I'm going to get on this motorcycle <laughs> and jump this fucking, these cars. So he gets on his motorcycle and he jumps these cars. He lands and Roxanne is pissed <laughs> that he did it because you can't, ju you just can't win with chicks. You just can't win. You just yep. can't win. You don't jump the car. And, and he, doesn't have, he doesn't have that panty dropper mustache. Like, uh, yeah, he just, he can't win with this girl, you know, but he, she still makes out with him, I guess. So anyway, uh, he, he goes back and he's in his room or whatever. And here comes the devil again. The devil's like, aha, you are now my servant of whatever. And Johnny's like, no way, dude. Uh, crash died. He goes, aha, sucker. He didn't die of his disease. He died crashing on his motorcycle. I win. You lose. You're now my servant of uh, destruction and going to like go get my, my coffee and donuts and shit. And this is what Roxanne like busts in the door. Okay, we're getting a little cheesy here. Roxanne's like, no, because I know a little something about something myself. And I am going to challenge your Satanistic evil with my pure of heart. So Roxanne is pure of heart. So she's like, no, you can't have him. I trump your Satan powers with my pure of heart. So that's where this page ends. But so she's there and they make out and huggy duggy and whatever. But then as the sun sets, the sun sets, he starts turning into the ghost rider. So even though he's not like Satan's servant, he still suffers the ghost rider curse. Whereas when the sun sets, he becomes the ghost rider. And like, uh, that's where, that's kind of where this, uh, Marvel spotlight ends. That's kind of the origin is, uh, he is kind of just by day he's Johnny blaze and throughout the rest of the comics, he still performs in the, uh, in the crash, uh, stunt show. And he gets into all kinds of adventures with, with Indian tribes, native American tribes and their uh, Indian spirits. And of course the devil, and he fights the Hulk. Oh, it's just, it's a, <laughs> it's a pretty cool thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, Ghost Rider is one of my favorite characters. He, he, I collect Ghost Rider. He's really cool. Uh, but this is kind of his origin story. So interesting facts in case uh, you don't know a, a whole lot about Ghost Rider and you you're, uh, want to collect a little bit on him. So obviously Marvel Spotlight number five is his first appearance. Uh, number two, uh, is, number second, his second appearance is in Ghost Rider or Marvel Spotlight six, also covered by Plough. Uh, third appearance in... Marvel Spotlight 7, Plug. Uh, fourth appearance, Marvel Spotlight 8, Plug. Then it kind of takes a little bit of a shift. We still get, uh, no, actually, no, nine, fifth appearance, Plug. And then Plug kind of stops doing those covers. And uh, Marvel Spotlight 10 is his sixth appearance. Uh, the cover is by Trep, Trep, Trempy, or, uh, and uh, Gio. I can't say those names. Um, okay, but sure. the interesting thing is we're all the way Marvel spotlight number seven, or sorry, 11, we're at his seventh appearance. So really his go his ghost rider. Number one is really his eighth appearance by the time we get to ghost rider. Number one, right. which is interesting because that is a, that that's a big boy book in itself, despite yeah. I mean, his number one of his solo series. That is a big boy book as well. Uh, a nine, four, I have a nine, four of this. I'm proud to say I'm bragging a little bit. Uh, and it's worth uh, probably about two grand at least. But uh, so it's a good book to have. Uh, that's all I got. Good stuff. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> might do Thank some more of these much. older. These might be it's some, fun. Do some more of these older stuff instead of always doing uh, recent stuff. Some of these older first appearances are fun. The language, it, not so much in this one, but like I said, the language is kind of. I'm not gonna say it didn't age well, but I mean it's, it's just a different the way, different way of speaking. The way, hey you, and all that kind of. This is the way they talked back then, or the way they wrote wrote the way they talked. It's kind of cool. That's fun different. going back and look, looking through those books again. You know, it's uh, it's definitely definitely a different feel story wise than than what you get nowadays. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a nice it's like nice little different. break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, anyway. they are. So what I wanted to do to carry on with the theme is uh, go through some of the lesser known spirits of vengeance. Of course, we've seen Johnny blaze and everyone knows they're Johnny cages and your Danny catches and your Robbie raises and all those well-known ghost riders. But 
There have been <laughs> a lot of spirits. It is. It is. That's, that's 100% that's accurate. How they talk. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yes. St <laughs> Sticks, was, Sticks was like 70 when, when that book came out. He's, yeah. he, he's, he, he knows all the vernaculars back, back through all the decades. But uh, so, yeah, I figured we'd take a look at some of the Ghost Riders. This is actually Ghost Roller here on the cover and Ghost Ghost Toast, by the way, as well. Skates. I'm not Skates. sure if you're if you've ever seen Ghost Toast, but Ghost Toast yeah. was a thing that existed to somehow. Ghost Rider? Yes. <laughs> that uh, what the or uh, was that an actual one? So the <clears throat> first pair of Ghost Riders appear in uh, Ghost Rider Volume 6, uh, number 33, Knuckles O'Shaughnessy and the Undead G-Man. Uh, this was during, I believe, the Jason Aaron run. This book in and of itself has every quickly made up Ghost Rider under the sun. Uh, I believe there's probably like 12 different Ghost Riders that exist in this book alone. It can't be any worse than what they've done with Spider Man and his Spider Ham and Spider. Oh, and definitely not. Loki. And this was all kind of part of the storyline. Yeah, yeah, this was all kind of part of this storyline here. So you got basically all of these thrown in in an episode, and then it was pretty much one and done for a lot of them. But they were, were cool characters. Uh, Knuckles O'Shaughnessy kind of reminds me of. Uh, Scott Farkas' sidekick in uh, Christmas uh, Christmas Story. I never heard of these. These are cool. And we got, uh, sorry, this, this page went off. But also from that Ghost Rider 33, there was Chief Hellhawk, who made his first appearance and also, I believe, died in that episode of the issue as well. But he's a cool Na Native American uh, Ghost Rider spirit, which is pretty badass. Also in volumes, the six, number 33 <laughs> devil rig, because if you can't have, if you can't have a ghost rider that wears a caterpillar hat, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it looks pretty badass to me. He's fueled on beef jerky. And fire? He's, he's, he's fueled on meth cocaine. And, uh, but what about his truck? Did his truck like, I, yeah, he, he had the rig, he had the full rig. You oh, can see the oh, exhaust right oh, there on the side. Yeah. He, he had a big rig that, that was his vehicle. So I, I thought that one, on. my ass is on fire. Come back. <laughs> and I love he's on the walkie talkie. That's just, <laughs> uh, you have Nemo, which is in uh, ghost rider volume six, number 28. This was a Buddhist, possibly Tibetan, uh, it's implied it was Tibetan, but this is a, a Buddhist ghost rider, which is kind oh, yeah. of a cool character. <laughs> and ghost rider Danny catch number three had spring heel Jack, which was a Jack the Ripper type character yeah, that crazy. roamed around London, killing neo-Nazis. Fucking Marvel. I swear to God. Yeah, I know. It's ne never, never, never uh, not take advantage of a good idea and drag it yeah. in through the mud and into the ground. Never, never pass up the opportunity to yeah. regurgitate and reuse an idea from something else. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had to throw in Carter Slade there. The actual original Ghost Rider, which was kind of the prototype in a way for, right. for the later Ghost Rider. Not as satanic as uh as his predecessors yeah no, he's, he's yeah, more but... of the ghost apparition rather than yes the, the demon oh so he wasn't like the uh he wasn't like the sam elliott uh portrayal of the the cowboy ghost rider yeah right from the he oh was, in the movie in, 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 the movie, in a yeah, way yeah, yeah i mean i i guess that was kind of a, a little tip of the hat there but uh yeah he he's more a spirit of vengeance that wasn't satanic yeah yeah but these these are great books if you find these books they're they're still quite pricey <laughs> uh and i had to uh, add there, there's goose, there's yes. two good there's two goose riders there's yeah. probably more i would guess because god knows there's eight million earths 
Uh, so we got uh, the one from uh, 9047 that shows up mm-hmm. in What The, uh, his first appearance in What The 13. Mm-hmm. And you also had a Goose Rider from Earth uh, 8311 that showed up yeah. in the uh, 1983 Marvel Tales. Uh, You're going to have a Goose. Peter Parker. A Maverick. Yep. We need yeah. a Maverick Ghost Rider. <laughs> So th- this one from 80- 8311 is, I would say, probably the oldest one because this is from the 83, 1983 Spider-Ham series in there. Yeah, the one, this was the current, the re- more recent series though, right? This, because it's the, not the 83, this, the 83 one looks more like a goose. If you, yeah, he's, he's on the, he, he's on he the cover of that book. Yeah. 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 But it's, I, I love, I love him just saying honk for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I know he's a goose, but it's just not horribly intimidating. Yeah. Yeah, apparently, you've never been chased nope. down by a goose. Nope. And that's that's <sighs> all I got. That's all I got for you boys today. I had to throw this up there because I saw this and it just amused me. Target staples. <laughs> all these things. Target's <laughs> <a> evil. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. With with all these places going out of business, we probably won't won't be seeing too many of, <laughs> of those those signs that have multiple stores on it anymore. Staples have staples. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I also That's remember I check out some of those. That's interesting. I've never heard of like most of those. Yeah, they're uh, they love throwing. I mean, and those were just those were the weird ones. There's so many other more mainstream ones too that they have that they ghost riders that they've thrown in and had live and die and come back and you know it's it's a, it's a lot but uh i don't know every everybody loves seems to love ghost rider it seems to carry through and always it's never been not cool i guess i mean even from when i was collecting in the 90s and stuff like that early 90s it was Ghost Rider was always a cool character. He's never really yeah. lost that. There's some horrible issues within Ghost Rider labels. Some of those Spirits of Vengeance ones are are pretty pretty awful. Yeah. But you find some gems of covers through a lot of those and some interesting stories as well. So hope you all enjoyed a Ghost Rider heavy episode this week. I know it's a bit of a short one this week, but uh We'll let Jedi recuperate and let Dom spend more money on things all fat in uh, in Rhode Island and uh, let everyone get a little bit of time back. And uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, no, I, I, I didn't. Re- I didn't replace Dom, Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> Dom will be back here when it, when he gets back from uh, hopefully to give us a good rundown of uh, what he saw in Rhode Island. They had a lot of celebrities and stuff. Uh, I believe this time in Rhode Island, which uh, I've been to the Rhode Island. Uh, I've been to the Rhode Island when I was stationed in Rhode Island for a year. I was there. It's a it's a decent con, or it was it was uh, it was it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I you know I I don't I'm not a big all these cons, especially the ones that end up being near me. They always just have a ton of celebrities. I, if you want to call them all celebrities, I don't I don't <laughs> hey, past celebrities. I guess one could say in, in a lot of cases. Uh, I don't know, but then they go really light on art artists and writers. So that, that always bugs me. Cause I yeah. like to go, I like to go see artists. I like to go see writers and I, I'm not a big, like getting things signed, but I like to talk to them. And if you see a decent artist, that's just kind of sitting there by themselves and nobody's coming up to them for some dumb reason, it's always a chance to get a commission or get a blank with just a room. Yeah. You know something a quick sketch on it or something like that so i remember the big the big the big person there the big personality i guess was adam adam west when i was there nice uh i had a lot of yeah i had a lot of comics a lot of you know wrestling and and that kind of stuff it was fun i had a good time it was really my first con ever was was going to that one and um i was just getting in back into comics i was really looking what i was looking for when i was there was a lot of the bronze age star wars at the time because i was just trying to kind of rebuild some of the stuff i had when i was a kid so uh it was a good that was a good time that was a good time to do it dom's having a great time that was a very good time to do it jedi (laughs) back then because everything kind of went 
went a little crazy oh, yeah, with yeah. those prices. I remember I got a Star Wars number one in, in decent position. I think it actually graded out at like a nine when I finally graded it. Uh, I think I got it for like $60 or something at the time. Yeah, there used yeah. to be, I mean, I remember back in the day, especially in the 90s, there used to just be bins and bins of just those, those old, old Star Wars runs. And they were just dirt cheap. Nobody, nobody paid them any mind because it was just forgotten about. Because it was before, it was before the prequels. You know, it was, it was before all that, before the news of the prequels even existed, and everyone had just kind of forgotten about everything. Man, those books were so dirt cheap. Somebody made a, somebody made a killing. Well, any, uh, any last so, words, everybody, for uh, for Friday? Uh, no, have a good weekend. Take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. I am taking an extended hiatus from Star Wars, but still check out those guys on Sunday. Check out Six. Six, are you on tomorrow? SNS, are you? Are they? I you I will be on show? SNS tomorrow. Um, the only thing I'm going to tell everybody is to remember that this weekend is daylight savings time. Ah, yes. Ah. So on Saturday, uh, jump in your TARDIS and travel back in time one hour and lose some sleep. <laughs> and you got time tunnel as well this weekend, right? Oh, yeah, I will have a, a, I'll have a special time tunnel this week. Nice. So that's a special time tunnel for daylight savings. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, join those boys Saturday night. Sunday, watch Dom come as close as possible to the movie Scanners uh on uh on the dark side show uh monday uh bruce has a fantastic show on kingdom of nerds make sure you sub up to kingdom of nerds as well as renovision uh wednesday tax show is always always a good time they've been doing a lot of fun stuff with uh kind of a a faux budget and a tier list of kind of looking through books and you know if i could go to a con with 500 bucks what would i buy out of a list mm-hmm. of books. So it's kind of, kind of some fun games going on there. Uh, you know, Friday as always coming up, uh, Bruce and, uh, has the other show and double O I, I don't think double O gets enough credit for his, for his new segment he does on tech. It really kind of sets the tone for me going into, uh, Sunday or going into Thursday and Friday, almost as good as sticks is news. <laughs> almost. But uh, I, I really Thank feel you. like uh, uh, he, he's underappreciated on on the tax show uh, he, for his new segment. He, he has to get job. through. He has to get through news with Marco. Yeah, he, yeah. It's hard getting. It's hard getting in any, let alone one <laughs> sentence. But uh, a few <laughs> sentences without Marco interrupting is uh, is a challenge. Yeah. So kudos to him. He does a great job. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 definitely good stuff. So yeah, definitely uh, join the boys. And as always uh pete drops his recorded shows throughout the week with you know, hidden gems and stuff like that as well so watch that and as always on fridays watch the cbsi hot 10 and uh and then right see, back here see, yep yep so yeah. to see what the market's right doing next. again the cbsi hot 10 it's a it's a it's a good list to watch to just kind of see what the market's doing we're, we're trying to look and see what the market where the market trends are moving it's not about what books to buy. It's just kind of a reflection of where the market's moving and what the market's doing um, from week to week, which is uh, it's good to know. You can never have too much knowledge. So uh, it's a good thing to watch. Well, thank you all for uh, joining us tonight. And we will leave you at exactly, oh, almost exactly 11 o'clock. My clock is always fast. So I'm staring at it and be like, man, we nailed it directly at 11 o'clock. And then I realized my clock oh. is fast and I'm a moron. Yeah. So. So it's close, but uh, we really appreciate everybody that came out tonight. Uh, try to come up with something good. As always, uh, leave any suggestions in the comments. I love I love doing artist spotlights of just you know, showing some artists and kind of having something themed throughout. So if there's an artist you all really like or want to see maybe more of or something, uh, you know, put it in the, the comments after the video ends and uh, we'll definitely... Uh, We'll definitely take a look at it. I think I think a lot of the ones we've done so far have been fan fan and chat suggestions. So uh, again, happy to do it. So throw them in there, and uh, you never know what you'll get. Jedi, you wanna you wanna take us out? 
Uh, what do you mean take us out? You mean hit the button? <laughs> no, just just say any any oh. any, very, any very last words you want to throw out. You, no, you, I already say it, man. Uh, you, you have uh, the most pleasant voice, me. so I, I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give you the last uh, word. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I already said take care of yourself, take care of the run. Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, the holiday season is upon us, so get ready for mm -hmm. some holiday themed more holiday themed shows coming here on Renovision, especially this one because I. Uh, we have the mastermind Joe's Doolin. Uh, I'm trying, he's the, I'm trying, pulling everything together. So uh, <laughs> lots of good stuff to come. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see. You, we'll see you down the road. Adios.